Here are five ways to make $1,000 plus from your gaming channel that you can start doing today, even if your channel is really small. And you might be thinking, now Marcus, that's a dandy video tile and all, but like I have a really small channel and I get it. Maybe your channel's not even monetized yet, or maybe you've literally just started and you still have less than a hundred subscribers. Well, here's the thing. One of my students, shout out to Tom if you're watching this, recently went full time on his gaming channel and he only had 12,000 subscribers. I know another dude, Matt, who's making 60 grand a year USD with a channel that had 10,000 subscribers. I myself, not to flex, but I've made tens of thousands of dollars using the methods mentioned in this video. I even got my first sponsor paying hundreds of dollars per video when I just barely scraped past a thousand subscribers on my gaming channel. And yes, the channels in these examples had thousands of subscribers, but they were making tens of thousands of dollars. And so if a YouTube channel with 10,000 subscribers can make 60 grand a year, do the math. You can find a way to make at least a thousand dollars on YouTube, even if you have a really small channel. If you do the things I'm going to talk about in this video. And here's the proof. This concept kind of became famous when a man named Kevin Kelly wrote the famous 1000 True Fans essay. And to summarize, the essay basically said that as a creator, you don't need a huge audience to make a full-time income. What you do need is a little pocket of true fans, super followers, who love you and what you do, and are willing to put their money where their, I don't know, heart is? Is that a saying? Now later in this video, I'll show you more about how you can get those true fans if you don't already have them on your channel. But first, let's run some numbers. And here's how it can work for the context of this video. Let's say you only have 100 subscribers, but out of those 100 subscribers, 20 people are actually hardcore fans. If each one of those 20 people is willing to part with $50, and it doesn't even have to be all in one go, maybe it's $50 over the course of six months or a year, you do yourself some quick maths and you'll find, voila, you have $1,000. And you know what? You might not even need 20 super fans. If you have 10 super de duper fans, wow, well, that was cringy. <laughs> and each person is willing to spend $100 on you, you got yourself a thousand big ones. How do you get your fans to part with $100 in a way that it's not spammy or salesy or gross? In fact, in a way that actually makes them like you even more in many circumstances. Well, I've got five methods I wanna talk about. These methods are all responsible for many millions of dollars being generated on YouTube. And me personally with gaming channels have made at least over $1,000 with each of these methods. So let me share them with you now. Method five, merch. Now I'm willing to bet most of you watching this right now think you know how to make money with merch. And I'm also willing to bet that most of you are completely wrong. See, slapping all three and a half pixels of your logo on a t-shirt and then trying to sell that t-shirt through one of YouTube's third party store integrations is a great way to make zero dollars. Again, assuming you're a small creator. See, if we take a step back, merch is not just one of those little shelves under those big YouTubers videos. Merch is basically selling physical apparel and products. Whether it's t-shirts, mugs, pillows, hoodies, stuff flamingos, doesn't really matter. As long as you can easily customize it and sell it. Problem is you don't get access to YouTube's merch feature until you cross a certain subscriber threshold. So as a small creator, here's what you want to do. Firstly, take it off platform. There are tons of websites that allow you to create a store that can sell merch and then link to that store in the descriptions of your videos. And I want to put a pin in something there and that is taking things off platform is a principle I want you to take with you throughout the remainder of this video. Whenever you can, you want as much control over your money making methods as possible. And obviously when you get larger, you'll have to run the numbers, but anything completely governed by YouTube's partner program is, in my opinion, risky. Another thing you want to do if you want to be successful with merch is to make it about your audience. See, most people just take a logo or their face and slap it on a t-shirt. Try to see if you can find a way to make a shirt that your ideal audience would actually want, regardless of whether you were the one selling it or whether they saw it down at Kmart or Walmart for you American folks. Try to make the thing as objectively good and about them as possible, and you'll find that your products will then appeal to more people and you'll get more sales. Another thing you want to do is jack up the price. See, the problem with merch is that if you're selling t-shirts for $20, which would probably cost you about $8 to print and ship, assuming you don't want to do any warehousing. And so that means you're only making about $12 per sale. And you need to sell a lot of t-shirts to make decent money on $12 per sale. And this is a huge mistake I made when I first tried to start selling merch and it's why my merch store died. So what you want to do is you want to jack up the price. And there are a couple of ways you can do that. Firstly, sell premium stuff. See, selling a premium shirt Firstly, it's going to be a much nicer shirt, but it'll only cost you probably an extra, you know, three to six dollars to actually create. But when it becomes a premium shirt or a premium hoodie, you can jack up the price of that thing, you know, 10, 20 dollars and people will still buy it. So your margins or the amount of money you make per sale become a lot better. Another thing you can do is upsell or sell in bundles. You know, the classic McDonald's, would you like fries with that? You want to do that, but on your store. Instead of selling individual t-shirts, see if you can sell bundles of four t-shirts or three t-shirts. 
Or maybe you can bundle different products together and people get a discount. And now you'll be getting 50 to $100 profit per order instead of, you know, 15 to $20, which is super important, especially if you're not getting a large volume of orders. For example, on one of my crappy t-shirt launches back in the day, I made $1,134 from 11 people. You want to be thinking high ticket, not low ticket. Now, if you want me to make a full video on print on demand and merch and all that kind of thing, let me know down below. But let's move on to the next method. Method four, prostitution. <laughs> what? I, uh, no, crowdfunding. Yeah, crowd. That, that's what I meant to say. Now again, YouTube has its own on-platform crowdfunding through YouTube members, but again, it's limited to only larger creators. So again, like we talked about in the previous point, take it off platform and that'll give you more control anyway. You can use a service like Patreon, for example, and just link directly to it. And while that won't give you a join button on your channel page, you can just tell people to go to the link in your description instead. Thank you so much for the support. Please go check out patreon.com slash super mega. Again, super important. You want something that you have maximum control over. And similar to the last point, try to make this crowdfunding operation about them. Instead of making a video like, hey guys, can you give me money because I want money? See what kind of bonuses or advantages or special opportunities you can give to your audience when they become a member of whatever your program is. Another big one with crowdfunding is again, jack up the price. You don't need a huge audience. If you can get 10 people to pay you $9 a month in a tad under 12 months, you'll have a thousand bucks. I'd even consider having multiple tiers and jacking up the price even more, you know, $17 or $27 or something like that. And you'd be surprised when you have these hardcore fans, how many people are willing to do that, especially if joining your crowdfunding platform has something awesome in it for them as well. The next method is YouTube ads. I don't know I said this video could be followed by small YouTubers, but I couldn't kick out AdSense because AdSense is one of the easiest ways many YouTubers make money. But even if you're not monetized yet, let's run some numbers. Now I wanna dive more in depth into this exact number in a moment, but roughly I'd say most gaming creators make about 80 cents to a dollar per thousand views. Probably sounds like a lot less than all of these other gurus will tell you. And that's because most gaming channels get paid a lot less than a lot of other niches out there because there's a lot of competition and sometimes it can be hard for advertisers to sell to gamers because we're tight ass bastards. Can relate. So let's assume we make $1 per thousand views. That means we'd need about a million views to make $1,000. However, you'd probably need a little bit more than that because you'd need to get to the point where you have a thousand subscribers and the 4,000 hours of watch time and could monetize your channel. So, you know, maybe we say 1.3 or 1.2 million views. Now that sounds impossible, but I have seen it before and I'm sure you've seen examples on YouTube as well of really small creators who have posted videos that have just gone viral have just blown up and got millions of views. But is trying to go for a viral video the best way to make $1,000 as a small creator? No, it's probably not. So now that we've paid YouTube AdSense its dues, I wanna talk about method two, sponsors. Now you're probably thinking, but no one wants to sponsor me, Marcus. I only get 30 views on my videos and it's not gonna be worth their money. And you're 100% right, your channel sucks and you're a pathetic loser. I'm joking, but in all seriousness, there are multiple reasons why sponsors actually sponsor creators and do brand deals with them. Sure, one of those reasons is so the sponsors can generate attention and sales for their product or service. But believe it or not, and this is coming from someone who's done digital marketing and has actually been on the other end of the spectrum, it's not the only reason. Another big reason why brands will sponsor YouTubers is to get content that they can then use on their social media or on their ads or on their website. Another reason is so that, that brand can say they have brand ambassadors. Because if a brand says they've got brand ambassadors or sponsors, it adds social proof to that brand, makes it more likely that your audience will trust that brand and buy as well. So as a small creator, you can't really offer much promotion to sponsors because you don't really have many views at the moment. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really. But what you can do is be a great brand ambassador and create awesome content for them. To get really good content, brands and marketers usually have to pay copywriters and videographers thousands of dollars. And so one of the hidden reasons that a lot of brands will work with small creators is that they can pay that creator a few hundred dollars and get a really good piece of content scripted and filmed for them, way cheaper and more authentic than if it was done by a professional agency. So if you get good at creating ads, and it doesn't have to be super professional, it just has to be a good ad. For example, the one you're watching right now was one of my sponsors and I shot it on an iPhone. You'll be surprised how many sponsors you can actually get sometimes. If you want to go one step further and learn extra skills, here's another ad that I worked on. And with a bit of practice and probably some YouTube tutorials, you could easily get this exact same look and feel with a camera that costs about 500 bucks. I'd recommend the Canon M50 if anyone's interested. So what you can do is you can go out there and do a few free sponsorships for brands, get some great ads, some great content, and it might take some practice. And then you can reach out to other sponsors, show them what you've done, and make the sponsorship more about you being a brand ambassador for them and creating awesome 
some advertising content rather than all the exposure that you'll bring them because you're probably not gonna bring them very much exposure. Now you might be wondering, isn't this just the same as being a videographer? And the answer to that is, well, kind of, yeah. But the difference is when you're reaching out to these sponsors or proposing to these brands, you're positioning yourself completely differently. You're a YouTuber who's passionate about this industry and their product and wants to make some awesome content. Compared to say a videographer who might approach that brand and immediately the person working at that brand dealing with that videographer is like, oh, this guy's trying to sell me. I don't know if I'm interested. It's probably gonna be really expensive. You get the idea. Now sponsors can pay really good money. As a small channel for a really good quality video and integration, you could get paid a couple of hundred dollars. For a large channel, well, I've got a friend who's got over 2 million subscribers. He's been paid almost six figures for one 90 second integration in one of his videos, which is insane. The only problem with sponsorships is that it is pretty reliant on the sponsors and it can get annoying needing to reach out to all these different companies and sponsors and basically pitch them yourself. But the number one method to make money that I want to share is probably my favorite one. But before we talk about that, I want to talk about a massive mistake most people do when they try to make money from their YouTube channel. And that is, they try to do affiliate deals. See, a lot of these other YouTubers out there, they make a lot of money through affiliate stuff. And so a lot of these other YouTube gurus will talk about affiliate promotions and how to make money as an affiliate and make it sound like the bee's knees. And they're right. For a lot of channels, affiliate stuff is awesome. But for gamers, in my experience, it usually sucks. There are a couple of reasons for this. Firstly, a lot of gamers are tight asses and it can be hard to find things that people actually want to buy. Like what are you going to sell them? A, a PlayStation? A, a monitor? A keyboard? They're gamers. They probably already got those things. Okay, well then maybe you'll sell cheaper, low ticket stuff like Control Freaks or G Fuel to name some famous affiliate programs out there. But the problem with those low ticket affiliate programs is you're getting like 30% commission per sale. So if you sell a set of Control Freaks for 14 bucks and then you... I'm trying to do the math in my head to work out what 30% of that would be, but I'm dumb so I can't. And my editor will show it on screen. And as you can see, it's not very much money. So if you only have like five, 10 or 20 hardcore fans, even if all of them buy a pack of control freaks from you, like whoopie do, you got yourself an Uber ride. So unless you're in a very specific niche that has some high ticket products, an example might be say V racing, where there are the virtual reality headsets, there are the steering wheels, there are the clutches, the pedals, all of those knickknacks that are somewhat high ticket. The people who are into that kind of thing have probably spent money on that sort of equipment in the past. And even if you're only making say 20 or 30% commission, you're still making 50, 60 bucks for a $200 steering wheel. Then I'd say, yeah, try it. But for most of you, that's not gonna be you. So don't bother playing around with these low ticket affiliate programs. Trust me, I've tried so many of them and it's almost all. And that brings us to what is probably my favorite method of making money through your YouTube channel. And that is creating your own digital products. This is the epitome of making money from your YouTube channel. Firstly, they are your products, so you have total control, you sell them externally, you get massive margins because I mean, they're digital, so you get like a 100% margin. And there's usually very little upfront cost to actually warehouse or produce them because you don't have to warehouse them. And you can produce them using most of the skills that you've probably already acquired through being a YouTuber. Now, examples of digital products could be cheat sheets for particular games. Maybe they're planners for certain game strategies. Maybe you're a tech wizard and you're able to create special mods or texture packs that you can play in your videos. And if other people wanna play those same mods and texture packs, they have to buy them from you. Or if you're feeling brave, you can even play around with NFTs. Another awesome one, if it works for your kind of niche, is online courses. And they can be really great because they're high ticket. You can easily charge a few hundred dollars for a course and no one will bat an eyelid. But if you're charging a few hundred dollars for like an ebook, people will call you crazy, even though those two things could have the exact same information in them. But there's one big problem here, because even though we've mathematically proven at the beginning of this video that you don't need a large audience to make money with any of these five methods we've talked about, you might be thinking, but Marcus, what if I have zero or not enough hardcore fans to even make these methods work? Well, if that's you, my advice is you should watch this video next because it's gonna teach you how to put yourself in your viewers' shoes so you can better understand, find, and convert hardcore fans in a simple five-step process. Check it out.